Welcome to the Self Girl Nerds Podcast. I'm your host, Marie, a courage coach, creative soul, and adventure seeker. Since through hiking the Pacific Crest Trail in 2019, I'm on a mission to help you embrace your most confident self so you can achieve your dreams too. If you're eager for deep conversations, big questions, and meaningful connections, join me on the quest to discovering how we can create a more magical and memorable life. Hello, nerds! How are you? I am good. Uh, We are the morning. I just finished drinking my coffee and you are the first people I am talking to. Um, Before we jump into today's conversation with someone I really love, I want to tell you about something exciting that's coming in September. I'm going to work with eight people individually to make the last four months of 2023 the most daring end of year they've ever had. I decided to call this offer the audacity because I was reflecting on the traits that helped me change my life. And that was the main one. I was looking back like five years ago, there was a clear moment that I remember when I was scrolling Instagram, I was sitting on the toilet, full disclosure, you know, you, you do it too. I was scrolling Instagram, uh, looking at all of those super inspiring through hiker accounts, people who were on the Pacific Crest Trail, Appalachian Trail, Continental Divide Trail. And I, I told myself, I had two thoughts. First, I thought, I can't keep living vicariously through others while being bored in my life. I cannot do another summer of looking at other people's lives, thinking that I'm going to have regrets about mine if I don't act and do something different. So that was one of my train of thoughts. And then the other one was like, well, if they do it, why the hell can I be able to do it as well? I had reached a point where I was annoyed with my own bullshit. And a friend of mine uh, recommended a coaching podcast called Unfuck Your Brain with Carol Lowenthal that introduced me to the idea that you can change what you believe about yourself. And when you do that, you change what you do with your life. I had never heard of coaching before or, you know, I knew the term life coach, but that's about it. And that podcast blew my mind. For the first time, I had the audacity to believe I could do something epic like through hiking the Pacific Crest Trail, even though people told me I sucked at sports all my life, even though people told me that I should start with a shorter hike, even though they said it was a bad idea to leave my partner behind for six months. I just decided to do it despite the odds. And that mindset right there, doing it despite the odds, changed my life. Not just once, but again and again and again in the last five years. When I changed career from graphic designer and illustrator to become a life coach because I had become obsessed and I still am in guiding people through the transformation that coaching had offered me. First through listening to podcasts and then hiring my own coaches who blew my mind and helped me see myself in a different more empowering light. Uh, Then that mindset changed my life again when I set the goal to make $100,000 in my business. And again, when I decided to leave a seven-year-long relationship a few months ago, even though it was a good relationship, it was um, good enough, but it was not exactly what I am aspiring to. All these decisions terrified me. The feeling in my body was like, how dare you? But in the face of self-doubt and everyone telling you it's a bad idea, especially your inner critic, you know what I learned to say? I learned to say, watch me. And I think that's how you become someone who doesn't make excuses, someone that you are proud of, that you can stand up for and you can say, I have no regrets and I love who I am becoming because I know I'm not making decisions based on what other people are going to think. Every time I have the audacity to aim higher for myself, I unlock a new level in me and I blow my own mind. 
So that's why I decided to create this new four-month one-on-one coaching offer called The Audacity. This is for those of you who have reached a point where you're tired of postponing your big dreams and never quite betting on yourself. Or maybe you don't have any specific big dreams, but you know that you have been playing small. You know that you have kind of been dumbing yourself down in subtle ways, that you have not been going all in, whether it be at work or in your personal projects or in your relationships, that you have been settling because you're afraid to put it all on the table. That is for you. There's only eight spots. So if you've been listening to this podcast for a while and thinking, actually, I'm curious about this. I'd like, I think I'd like to work with Marie someday. Make sure to book a call now so that we can check we're a good fit. We're going to talk about what, what, where you are in your life and where you could be if you had the audacity to go after what's calling your heart. Okay. I'm going to leave you with a quote that I really love from my favorite movie, Beginners, and it goes like this. Half of the people think things won't work out. The other half believes in magic. Now, I want to ask you, what half do you want to be part of? And of course, you're going to say, I want to be part of the half who believes in magic. But is this how you have been showing up in your life? Or have you been showing up with a foot on the brake? Now, you're going to need to be honest with yourself here. It's one thing to say, yes, I believe in magic. Yes, I'm going to go for my dreams. But how have you been acting in the day to day? You know, you know, if you've been playing small, you know, deep in your heart. So go to selfgrowthnerds.com slash audacity. And there will be a big yellow button there for you to book a call and decide if you want to work together to end the year in a way that's going to make you really proud. Okay, now let's jump into a super inspiring conversation that's also going to kick your butt a little bit. Today, we have a guest that I love very much. Her name is Gail Keys Allen. Welcome, Gail. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Gail is a coach for high achieving female entrepreneurs. She has a podcast called the Old Black Lady Podcast. And I'm just going to tell you guys how I met her because it's a fun story. And then I'm going to let you, Gail, tell my listeners a little bit about yourself. Okay. So I was in a class, an online course called the Reinvention Class. I think it was last year or two years ago. And Gail came on. And she said to the coach, she said, I'm 66 years old. And by the time I'm 76, I want to have made $10 million. And I thought she was so badass. So after the class, I messaged her like a fangirl on Instagram. And I said, who are you? I want to talk to you. Let's get together. Um, and, and yeah, from then we started talking. I went on your podcast. You came to teach my clients about money, eh, a bunch of stuff. Um, and yeah. Now, tell my clients who you are a little bit about you, and then we're going to jump into my questions for you. Yeah, so I am Gail Keys Allen. And when I say I'm a bold Black lady, I put parentheses around the B because I'm uh, people look at me and think she's an old Black lady but I'm a bold black lady. That don't define me as an old black lady. I guess I should talk about that more, huh? Because now I'm 67 years old and nobody ever believes my age. I don't act my age as people, you know, I don't know, they think there's a certain way you're supposed to act when you're a certain age, but um, I'm curious about everything. I help all the people. Yes, I help mostly entrepreneurs, but Really, I help people that want to change their freaking life. And I actually, I do have a course called Unapologetically Bold, where you don't have to be an entrepreneur. So I'm still working on how to describe what I do. I help women be free. I do only work with women. Um, I help women be free and bold. And part of being free is being bold. Yeah. Um, so I, I saw on your on your Instagram, it said you help 
people become the person who dreams bigger than they have ever dreamed. Yes, and that has been how I've accomplished what I've accomplished in the past couple of years. I, you know, if your audience doesn't know, but I quit my job as an accountant. I had like this traditional job as an accountant. My last job, I was there for 16 years and I was bored out of my mind, like bored the hell. Um, and I'm a naturally creative person. When I was a kid, I wanted to be an artist and a writer and was told I couldn't do that, that I should do people's hair. Like literally my guidance counselor tried to make me go to vocational school to do people's hair. No, nothing wrong with that, but that was not me at all. I, I wanted to be an artist. So it's kind of interesting how all these things are fused into my personality. Um, and really the core of who I am. At my core, I am an artist, a creative, and a writer. Um, and who's been pigeonholed, yeah. right? So I bring the creativity to business. I love this. Yeah, it reminds me of how the other day I found in my parent, uh, at my uh, parents' house something that I had written when I was like 14 years old. Mm -hmm. And it said... I love theater and cinema and I love to write and I love to act and I'm really good at it mm. with, with lots of exclamation marks. But then we kind of lose that childlike wonder and that connection to our core, don't we? And get pigeonholed, like you said. Totally. Well, I, I'm working a lot with my clients on um, undoing, like unlearning the things that they believe about themselves, because unfortunately, most of the things that we think that we're capable of doing, we're not capable. Most of us think we're not capable of doing most things, right? But that was socialized into us. It's not true. Pretty much, I believe you could do what you put your mind to. Now, there's some, there's a few things, you know, you might not be able to like, um, play basketball if you're five foot or something. I don't know. You know, <laughs> you might not be a great singer. Like I love to sing. I don't have a great voice, but I love to sing. So I'm going to sing whether people like it or not. Right. But I believe we can find joy in whatever it is, whatever the hell we want to do. And we don't need other people to tell us this. This is the other thing too. We've been graded on things all our life. So we try to show up as perfect so we can get an A, which I was the queen of that, um, because we want people to believe we're smart because if you have A's, then you go to the best schools, then you get the best jobs and you make the most money. And none of that is true. Yeah. The A students don't typically make the most money. Yeah, no, that's so true. So many of the most successful entrepreneurs, they had like their C's in school. My, my dad had a really successful business my whole life. And he was a he was the worst student. He hated going to school. He was yeah. a rebel. Yeah. Look, look, look at a lot of the um, big entrepreneurs, business, large businesses. A lot of those people didn't go to college or they quit college. Um, so we've been fed all of these lies, really, I believe is to keep us small. And it's not like one person. It's it's in the systems. It's the whole narrative. Oh, yes. Yes. And we don't want to step outside of the masses, the herd mentality, because it doesn't feel safe, right? But I'm about making it a safe place, a safe spot to step outside of that programming and not follow the herd. And in some ways, I've always been this way, but I wasn't vocal about it. Like in my mind, I definitely thought this way, but I still was afraid to vocalize it. Now I'm like, what, what do I have to lose? Like, have nothing to lose. So really during the, a little before the pandemic and through the pandemic, I've been really unfolding. I say blooming like a flower. Mm. Tell us more about it, because I know the story, but I want my listeners to hear more about that big shift. I mean, you you change your whole life around. And I have I had clients who were 25, 26, 27 years old. They, they were telling me it's too late to change my mind. <laughs> and there you are all the way into your 60s. And tell us about what you did. 
Well, one thing I thought about this morning is interesting. I've done this more than once and, and everybody listening has changed their life. People just believe after college or after your tw early 20s, it's too late, which I don't even know why they believe that. But I got divorced at 50 and had one type of life. That's really when I got that accounting position because it was stable and the salary was good and I have a daughter and I needed to be able to take care of her. But then to turn around and quit that job 16 years later and start all over again at 66, that's pretty big. Um, and I'm not going to say I wasn't afraid, but I worked through those fears and I got certified as a coach. I got certified during the pandemic, so I was still working my job during the pandemic and got certified during the pandemic, started getting clients. I had been miserable for probably 14 of the 16 years. And kind of like the straw that broke the camel's back was that my manager came to me um, when we started coming back part time into the office after the pandemic. She just came up to me and said, um, I'm changing your hours. After, after 16 years, she decides to change my hours without discussing it with me. And her and I had worked together 15 of the 16 years. And I'm like, okay. And she told me I worked for a law firm and they all, everybody else worked nine to five thirty. But when I started there, my daughter was in a private school with no buses or anything. So I had to pick her up. So they allowed me to work earlier hours and it, no, they didn't care. I mean, nobody cared because the work that I did was independent. Like I wasn't a secretary mm -hmm. or legal. So I really worked very independently. But all of a sudden, out the clear blue sky, she decides she's changing my hours to 9 to 5.30. Well, I, you know, I'm in the U.S. I work in Washington, D.C., but I live in Maryland. Some days that could be an hour, hour and a half commute each way. So when she told me that, I'm saying to myself, you've got to be kidding me. That means I wouldn't get home till close to 7 p.m. And I had clients then. And I was starting with my clients at 4 p.m. So when she said that, and then she said it Friday late in the day when I was leaving and she was getting ready to go on vacation. So I had a whole week after that. And I just say spirit, my divine knowing, whatever it is. I, I just kept putting my hands up and saying, it's them or me. Oh, gives me shivers. Yes. It's them or me. And I could, there was like nothing in me that could have chosen that job over myself. I just couldn't. I was in the midst of changing my life, like building my business and changing my life. And to me, it was just a, a huge turning point. Um, I did not have a lot of money in the bank. I did not, you know, like financially, I was, ha I was bringing on clients, but I don't know if you know this, but what I did was I refinanced my mortgage and took some cash out of my house, out of the equity in my house. Oh, no, I didn't know that. Yeah. I mean, I've talked about it, but I haven't talked that much about it. to get Because I'm, I'm single. I'm divorced. My daughter and my grandson live with me, and I just felt like that would buy me some time. And I quit the job. And can you believe my manager cried when I resigned? Because she could not believe we had been working together for so long and she just thought we would retire together. <laughs> it's so crazy. Wow. That's I have so many questions that come to mind, but like one of the first one is what you said about remortgaging your house is important because many people think that they're stuck, but actually when you really look at it, there are possibilities when you want to make a shift. Yes. People people re Read more, you know, um, read whatever. I'm trying to think of the word now. Remortgage or get a new mortgage or whatever. Take the equity out of their house to put their kids through college, right? They do it to upgrade their kitchen. My kitchen needs to be upgraded, but you know what? <laughs> I'd rather stick with my old kitchen and be free. Yeah, people are, are hesitant when it comes to them to bet betting on themselves. Yes, yes, but I decided to bet on myself. And one thing that was kind of eye-opening that was said to me 
step would probably, I know would help your listeners. And that is, what if your business was your, well, in the States, it's a 401k, but your retirement plan. What if your business was your retirement plan? Like, I'm 67, but my, my mind is sharper than most young people. And physically, I'm in good shape. So I'm not going to just retire and sit somewhere and die. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, this is really for all the people that think that they have no other options. You have lots of options. You just, you just didn't know you had lots of options. Yeah. I closed off to the options. But I opened my mind to the options because I thought the same thing that I didn't have any options until I started really getting coached and looking for solutions. That's the thing, because when you're in, in like a panic mode, you're you have tunnel vision and you just see all, all the issues, all, all the impossibilities. Totally. But then when you calm down and you start reconnecting with how resourceful you are you start seeing what you can do what you can work with who you can speak to yeah and the thing that that really um caught my attention was that every time i had like an emergency situation i would figure it out so i'm like why am i only figuring out emergencies like why can't i figure things out when everything's going great Mm -hmm. And most people do that. They have an emergency, an urgent situation. Their back is up against the wall. Even I spoke to one woman that was like, I had to put my kids through college. Well, you didn't have to. You didn't have to. There are plenty of people. But she found a way to put her kids through college. Mm -hmm. She believed she had to. That's so good. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this. What you were saying about your manager coming to you with the with the change of hours makes me think of the formula for change. I don't know if you've heard about it. It's uh, It says, amongst other things, that in order for you to make a change, the dissatisfaction in your life has to be higher than your resistance. So thanks to your manager, the dissatisfaction became higher than your resistance. But what if she never came in? What about the people right now who are listening to us that they're just comfortable in their job and there's not a manager coming at them with bad news that are going to kick them in the butt? Well, the thing the thing that I didn't say is that I had I had written my resignation letter a few months before that mm. and I my family talked me out of it. <gasps> Because even my friends and family are like, you're gonna leave that good job, you make good money, and it's not that hard, and da 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 whatever. And mm-hmm. so I listened to them and I didn't leave the job. So yes, that nudge pushed me out the door, but I would say don't let it get to that point. Plan your escape, like in hindsight. Plan your escape in advance. Even if you're not ready to escape, I call it escape. I think of it as escaping. So I think of it as being in a prison cell. Like I I, I had my own office, right? And it was a box. And I, for years I had a window. Then they moved me to an office with no window. And I was like, oh, they really put me in prison now. Good <laughs> Lord, right? <laughs> I'm really in prison. So if you think about that cubicle, that office that whatever as as a box that you're in and you want to escape start figuring out your escape plan you don't have to act on it immediately but you will feel so much more secure when you know that you have a plan you won't feel like you have no options most people never plan so they just keep going with that thought that's in the front of their mind i have no options i have no options but what if what if we all had an escape plan? Mm-hmm. Escape plan. Yeah, you know what I call this with my clients? What's that? The disruption playground. Let's just play. Let's just play like disrupt your life. Like, like what would it look like? What would you do? What would step number one be? Step number two. That's what I did when I was considering my separation. Mm-hmm. Um, just Let's just pretend you were to break up. What would it look like? And you move through the steps and then it helps you realize, oh, okay, it might actually be more doable than my primitive brain was making me believe. Totally. And it is more doable. It is more doable than people. Like society, 
there's so all these messages. If if society was saying entrepreneurship is what you should do after high school and not and they didn't and not college, everybody would be entrepreneurs, right? The only reason why everybody believes they have to go to college is because society says you have to go to college in order to be successful. Mm-hmm. But what if, what if it was flipped? Which I believe it is flipping because college doesn't make you successful. It definitely does not make you successful. I mean, I, I have a college degree. I it probably when I went to college, it I mean it definitely opened some doors, but now the way the economy is and the way society is, no. having an uh, online business, it's an option. It's it's an option. It's an option, but maybe we don't need to see it as the option, the path. And for me, I mean, this is my opinion. You know, nobody else has to agree with me, but I've lived it and seen it. If you're going to, if you want to be a doctor or an attorney or like something where you have to be licensed or whatever the thing is, yes. And maybe some people might want to go to school to have some time to mature. But work during that time because nothing is going to give you the experience at working and especially entrepreneurship. Because even if you had a little side business, it gives you so much confidence that collecting a paycheck you will never have. Because when you know how to make money, you're not afraid of losing your job. So it's not the job that's the problem. It's the fact that you think you can't make money without a job. That's the problem. You know what? There's something you wrote on Instagram, a quote that I noted down, and I love this. You said, I believe that every woman should know how to make money without a job. Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah. That because, is a bold statement, and I love it. Tell, like, Keep telling yeah. us more about why you think that. Well, the belief started with myself and the fact that I was a traditional wife, you know, I stayed home for a while and I worked and I had the option of working or not working. I never thought my perfect, I have air quotes, perfect marriage would break up after 20 years. So I wasn't even thinking about being responsible for taking care of myself. Like, you know, I know how to take care of myself, but financially taking care of myself. And it wasn't until my marriage broke up that I was like, oh, have. Like, I used to know how to make money, but like, I still do kind of. And I say I have a hustler mentality because I grew up pretty poor. So it was like, you had to make things work. It was like, no option. You couldn't just like sit back and wait for something to fall in your lap. And um, like, when I left my ex husband, I had just had a brain tumor six months before then. And I left. Like he, it was infidelity on his part. I decided to leave, and I got a job. I didn't even have a job because I had had the brain tumor, so I couldn't drive. I couldn't do it, really much of anything. And finally, I got permission to drive. I was on um, anti seizure medication, so I couldn't drive. I got a job. I borrowed some money from my father for the first and first month uh, rent and down payment, and moved. And when my house sold, I got proceeds from the house. So I paid my father back and I started with that. So that really taught me, like, expect the unexpected. Or even if you're married, your husband could die, right? He, he, he could decide he had enough and walk away. Like, there's so many different circumstances that could happen. And I've talked to a lot of women that have been in similar circumstances. And all of a sudden, it's like, dang, I was dependent on my husband to be the breadwinner. Uh, yes. And you know what's also, I was going to say, even worse, but it, let's not put them on a scale. So many women stay in situations they don't want to be in because they're dependent on their husband financially. And I, I could have done that. But to me, it was almost like that moment of the job saying, you know, either you work these different hours or else. You know, it was kind of like that, like with my marriage, I felt like it's like you live here, you live, stay with him and be disrespected, which I'm disrespecting myself, or I jump, I jump shit and take the chance and, and I survived. 
So I, I just believe even if you never have to make money <laughs> like on your own, but so many people lose their jobs. So many people retire and run out of money. I mean, there's so many situations where we think we're good and we're not, right? Mm -hmm. But if you know how to make money, you don't lose sleep over that. You don't feel like you have no options. You know, like even when I was younger, I used to say back in the day, if I could type, I can always find a job, which that was true back then because I could type really fast. And, you know, we, they used to give you time typing tests. And then when I started doing accounting, I was like, everybody needs an accountant, a bookkeeper or something. So I can go back to work, whatever. And that's what I feel like now. If it's, if it's not working or I want some extra money, whatever, get a part-time job, whatever. But I have skills and I know how to make money. Yeah. And I'm always, and now, you know, I have coaching, but I've run my business. I've run multiple other businesses before. So that's how I prefer to make my money is helping people run their business and teaching them how to launch it. But I believe that women should know how to make money. And, and how and do they get, if, if they're listening to us and they're thinking, yeah, I agree, but where do you get, how do you get started? Play, like you were talking about. Um, and that's what I did. Like I have played with so many different ways of making money. So you can play with those ways of making money and still have a job. I I made jewelry. Then I then I got certified as a personal trainer and started working with my coach that I had back then. And then I loved to bake. And him and I started a catering business on the side. So I like, I just like whatever I already know how to do, I say monetize what you already know how to do. Yeah. I, One of my clients is in education and well, my past clients, and she started a podcast for fun, but then she's like, I really want to like start a real business. Now she does podcast management. She liked podcasts anyway. It's not, none of it is really hard. It really is not. You just haven't learned the steps, you know, but once you learn the steps and start testing them, it, it, it works. So even if you, like, to me, it's not a small feat to bake cakes. Like, what I used to make was, um, like, vegan, banana bread, zucchini bread, like, all these different bread dessert kind of things that were vegan. Nobody had to teach me how to do that. I already knew how to cook and how to bake. I just learned how to make it vegan. Like, okay, that's not hard. Yeah. Just ourselves we can't do it and literally i did not know how to do it. i went to like um they have like these supply stores where you can buy things for bakery i bought these aluminum pans and i bought the little sleeves of the plastic sleeves you put it in and the little ties it's all there it's like google it like i i know of a guy that made cheesecake and he just started making cheesecake Cheese, you mean Cheesecake Factory? No, 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 not, no, I don't know those, that person. This is somebody <laughs> I know started making cheesecake. <laughs> no, just a regular like New York style cheesecake. And people would taste it and they loved it. And then people kept asking him for more and more and more. So a lot of times people think a business has to be this multi-million dollar thing and people don't want the responsibility. But what if it made you 200,000, 300,000, wouldn't you be happy with that? Even, you know what, Gail, people tell me like they would be happy with an extra 5,000 in a year. Well, that's, what if, I mean, it's easy, it's easy. So easy. easy. But th that, yeah, that's the thing. If we have an all or nothing mentality, that's what, that's the problem that I see. People think, oh, well, if I'm going to have a business, I need to quit my job and have this great idea. No, yeah. you're just playing on the side. What if just playing on the side leads to an extra 5,000 and then the year after that, it leads to an extra 50,000. We know, you and I know so many people who have a job, full-time job or a part-time one, and they make like an extra... Uh, 
a few thousands, lots yeah. of thousands on the side doing something that they love. That yeah. is, it's just okay. What are you good at? What do you love to do? That's all. That's useful to people. That's yeah. going to add value to people. That's it. Totally. Now, with me, it was interesting because when the month before I decided, well, the month before I put in my resignation, well, I didn't put my resignation in, but I wrote it. Yeah. I had still working full time, made twenty three thousand dollars in a month. Ooh. And I was like, oh, damn. With your coaching? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, and I want people to know last year was my first full year in business and I made close to 300. I made $295,000. And uh, can you tell us what's the most you had made before? Before that, the most I made was 105. As an employee? Yes. Yes. So? So I tri almost tripled my salary from the year before. Let's have a minute of silence for that. <laughs> Just kidding. But yeah, I think yeah, people have like a, a vision of the salary they're making is just going to go up a little bit for the rest of their life until they retire. That's not how it has to be. Right. And I thought that too, because when I started that job 16 years before that, I was making 55000 And so it did go up more than a little bit. So that was really good because they gave really good... Um, raises. So I went from 55,000 to 105,000 in 16 years. But I went from 105,000 to 295 one year. In one year. Wow. Yeah. You know my my um my dad told me he they spent their 30s fucking around trying things and it, and then Oh, he, he said, in our 40s, we started making a little bit of money. And then in our 50s, making a, lo a lot of it. It doesn't have to be this line, this like, yeah. Everybody's not going to be, you know, this YouTube star in your no. 20s, right? There's a lot to be said for living life, gaining wisdom and experience, and then deciding how you want to live your life. And it doesn't have to be according to the way everybody else is living their life. Mm -hmm. That's such an important question. How do you want to live your life if you don't look at the limited options on the menu that you've been given? Okay. Uh, you and I are two single ladies, aren't we? Yeah. Um, I was talking with someone I was dating recently, and they asked me, oh, uh, what does a work week in your life look like? So I start telling them about the kind of schedule that I have and they look at me kind of puzzled and they yeah. said, they said, wow, the way your life, you live your life is very cool. It's kind of like you're creating your own thing. Yeah. I forget. I forget Gail now though. Mm, yes. Yes. <laughs> that's true. You know what I find? I find that some people apologize to me for still having a job. Like say, oh, you're so lucky. I, I haven't like found the courage to quit my job yet. And I'm like, I'm not judging anybody at all. Whatever works for you works for you. But for me, literally this morning, I'm, I'm getting ready to do a challenge, a free challenge for my community called My Body, My Business. And I didn't say that I'm a health coach too, which that was like another iteration of my life. I got certified as a health coach mm -hmm. and a vegan lifestyle coach. I got that certification too. So right. I did a lot of things, but um, so, so for 21 days, I'm taking them on this journey of taking care of their bodies so they can show up better in their lives. That's really what it means. You don't have to have a business, but it's your body is your business. Your business is your body. It all, you can't have one without the other. You can't be effective on your job, in your life without taking care of your, your body. And this morning I was like thinking, how can I challenge myself? Because, you know, I'm doing this challenge with them, but how can I challenge myself? And I'm always thinking about ways to take things to another level. So one of the things that I decided, and I've been doing this a little bit, is every single day of the 21 days, I'm going to a park, a trail, 
a, a body of water, something outdoors. And I am going to limit my calendar. And, and actually my business has been pretty slow this year. So I have a lot of time and I'm like, I'm going to be outside. I'm going, that is my, that's where I love to be. And I know it will take me to another level. Mm-hmm. So everything doesn't have to look the same for everybody. We have to make our, we have to play and find our own way. You know, yeah. some people might love the city, which I love the city too. Actually, I, I live about well, four hours from New York. And I was thinking, maybe I'll get on the train and go to New York one day. Like, well, even on the train, it's probably two and a half hours. Why do I have to do the same thing every day? Why do I have to? Because I found myself locking myself. Like making the 300 came at a price, right? I worked all the time. And this year I had to really reevaluate because I got burned out. So I'm proud of myself that I did that. Yeah, I'm proud of myself that I did that. But I don't want to make it. I don't want to make that amount of money the way I made it in the past. Mm-hmm. And so now I'm exploring a different way to make money with more ease and more freedom. Mm-hmm. You need something different in this season. Totally, totally, totally. So now I'm playing with that. So I love that you teach your people to do that because how else are we going to know whether it's for us or not unless we play with it? Yeah, and I, I, my client and my uh, my listeners also know uh, my uh, faithful listeners if they've listened that I also hit a wall in the last year and I had to reevaluate. Okay, how, what do I want now? What what's what's the next chapter? Yeah. Um, and I'm curious to ask for for them for my listeners who might have a full time job. How do you start regaining some of your freedom when you've got Th- these obligations so you and i are talking we have our own business so we have more uh, wiggle room to choose but what if you've got to show up to work how do you start yeah creating well, that I, for yourself i did this the past before covid when i was at my job because this dissatisfaction was going on for a long time so i mentioned that i used to catch a commuter bus into the city so what i started doing is catching an earlier bus and walking around the city. And I, I lit, I mean, I worked a couple of blocks from the White House and the National Mall and everything. So five days a week, I would get off the bus at an earlier stop and explore the city. And I, I can't even tell you why, but I enjoyed walking down Pennsylvania Avenue and seeing the White House and seeing the surrounding, the monuments and all of those things. So. I did that every morning. You know, here and there I might have skipped. I wasn't feeling good or whatever. But 99% of the time, I got off the bus early and walked the city. I love that. And what did that bring for you? Yeah, it it brought a level of peace before I went indoors. And I felt like I'm taking time for me. The other thing I did too, and this was something that I, no exceptions, I went out at lunchtime every single day. Even if I only walked around, it was a big city block, but even if I only walked a block, the only time I didn't go out, if it was like pouring down rain or ice, I went out every day. I made sure that I got in the sun, shine, got some fresh air every day because it's too easy to get locked into the job right? And then you just lose more and more of yourself. So I made a promise to myself that I was going to be outdoors. I was going to, and so me doing this now isn't unusual for me. The only thing that's unusual is I'm going to explore new places where maybe I haven't been before, been, you know, been there. Mm. But now what's the belief and we're going to leave our listen, my listeners with that what's the belief that allowed you to give yourself that gift oh, that's such a good question because because so many people hear that and they say yeah 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 i know i should do this 
and then they don't take care of themselves. So what's the belief that made you actually do it? I think the belief is almost that I have to. Otherwise what? Otherwise, I'll lose my mind and lose myself. Mm. Literally, I will lose myself if, if I don't do this. Even during COVID, my, my daughter had my grandson right before COVID. I used to take him in this in the in the buggy, the stroller, carriage, whatever, almost every day for a walk. I got out of the house. I got outside. Like it, I, I believe for my sanity and peace of mind, I have to do it. Mm-hmm. I tell myself I have to do it because when I don't do it, I feel like crap. Mm-hmm. I start to lose myself. And your listeners, probably a lot of them have already lost themselves. But the way to start finding yourself is to go for a walk. It can be that simple. I'm not, I'm not like exaggerating at all. It can be that simple. Go for a walk, but without your phone, like don't, talk to people on the phone like when i see people doing that it drives me crazy don't walk don't go out for a walk and be on your phone be with yourself mm. with you listen to your thoughts that are coming up good bad or indifferent like acknowledge what's coming up for you because once you start walking or get outside you have that space because a lot of times people tell me i don't know what i'm thinking you don't know because you haven't paid attention. Yeah, and when, when when you make space, what matters comes up to the surface. The answers start getting clearer. The whisper starts getting louder. Totally. And oh, this is the other thing too. If there's something you're curious about, just pose the question to yourself before your walk. Don't try to find the answer. Just say, I wonder. If I were to leave my job in a year, or if I were to make more money, I, I wonder how I could do that. Don't research it. Don't talk to other people about it. Just live with the question. Fuck yes. Just live with the question because the answer always comes. Hang out with the question. Let it come. It always comes. The other part to that, though, is when it comes, you better believe it. <laughs> what happens is we get the answer and it's like, oh, no, I can't do that. No, 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 not me. It, yeah, well, it's going to come a first time. You're probably going to ignore it. It's going to come a second time, third time, fourth time, and eventually it's going to be like a slap in the face. <laughs> like, like, like I got when my manager said. Exactly. The the earlier you listen, the less it's going to hurt. Oh, that's the darn truth. Yeah. 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 On those words of wisdom, please, Gail, tell our listeners where they can find you. You can find me on Instagram at Gail Keys Allen. Um, That's where I mostly hang out. And uh, yeah, say hi. Like, come into my DMs and say hi and tell me how you enjoyed the conversation because we could have gone way deeper. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> I had so many questions that I didn't ask. Yeah. Do like, <laughs> just do like me and reach out to, to Gail and tell her w- w- what insight you got from our conversation. Um, yeah. yeah. We're all just a bunch of humans who like to talk and go deep. Totally. I love it. Thank you so much, Gail, for being here today. Thank you for the invitation. It was my pleasure. Bye, nerds. Have a beautiful week. If you love what you're hearing on the Self Growth Nerds podcast and you want individual help finding a new direction for your life and developing the courage to make your dreams a reality, you have to check out how we can work together on selfgrowthnerds.com or message me on Instagram at selfgrowthnerds. My clients say they would have needed that support years ago. So if you're tired of feeling like you're wasting your life, don't wait. Get in touch now. And I cannot wait to meet you.